Hello, this is Ghostlike. In this part of the series, I wanted to show you just how you can clear the outputs from persistent storage. Free tiers have a 5 GB limit, pro tiers have a 15 GB limit, and grow tiers aren't unlimited either. I mentioned before that Paperspace has a very small storage limit relative to what you would have on a personal computer. So in this video, I want to teach you how you can free up used space. As you prompt and generate images, especially if you are upscaling, your persistent storage space will rapidly get filled up. For that reason, it is important to know how to delete files in order to dispose of them and free up used storage space. Let's get started. Here I just used the starter script to fetch the paper space GPU machine instance. If you aren't familiar with this, check out one of my earlier videos. This time I was lucky and got an instance right away. The expected time depends on your time zone, whether you are in the US or Europe and it depends on which day of the week it is. I'd expect the instances would be harder to get on Saturday and Sunday. Right now I'm logging into my Paperspace account. You just click on the project, click on the notebook and it will take you into the console. Since the subject of this tutorial is how to delete files, we need to do that from the terminal. It is possible to do this from the file browser as well, but it is very bare bones. While it is possible to delete individual files, it will refuse to do so for the non-empty directories. The terminal is much more convenient, as you will see. Right now I am looking up how to get the directory and file sizes on Stack Exchange. You'll see this gives us some confusing results. I'll just paste the command into the terminal using Ctrl V. This kind of output confused me at first, but I realized that the storage directory has a size of 512 bytes for the simple reason that this is the size of the simlink. I'll show how to get the actual size later. For now, let me demonstrate that the images we prompted in the last video are in fact there. Now what I will try is to delete those outputs. Just using the remove command on a non-empty directory would fail, so it needs the R flag. This tells it to remove the files recursively. In the previous versions of the web UI setup script, erasing the output directory like I am showing here would have worked. If you tried this now, the directory would go away, but when you logged into the notebook in the future, you'd notice that the old outputs are still there. In the web browser, the outputs directory is gone. But you can see here that the folder is still present in the web UI directory. The remove command that I executed does not recursively erase the contents inside the simlinks. For that reason, the original files are still there. In order to properly clean things up, we need to get rid of the original directory. Here I have been pressing tab to autocomplete. If I just type in st, it does not work, because there are two directories starting with that prefix. But pressing tab again will give me a list of candidates. Instead of the long way around that I've been doing here, another option would have been to add a trailing slash to the original rm command. Executing the recursive rm command in the terminal with the correct directory as the target will remove the old outputs for good. In the file browser, you need to click on the refresh to see the changes. Before we end the lecture, I want to show you one more thing. At the start of this video, I've used the du command. That is an abbreviation for disk usage. The outputs of it are still there in the terminal. You can see, it doesn't give the sizes inside the simlinks. But if you go into the storage directory and type the command there, you can see the sizes exactly. If instead of that you want the disk usage command to give you the size while taking the contents of the simlinks into account, pass the big L flag into the du command. The result you get here might also not be what you have expected. It is in fact correct. The problem is that it accounts for the stable diffusion 1.5 model that we have mounted from the Paperspace public datasets. Check it out. If we unmount the dataset,
then try the du command with the big L flag again, we should get the correct size. With this we are almost done with the educational parts of these lectures. By now you should know how to set up the notebook, how to grab the GPU instances, how to install the external models and how to free up used space. In the next lecture I just want to show you how to set up more sensible defaults for the web UI and how to clean up the script itself. Armed with that knowledge we will finally be able to prompt properly. If you found this video useful please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. This has been your favorite ghost and I hope to see you soon in the next video.